studios of the Metro News Radio Network in Morgantown, this is West Virginia's premier sports talk show. From Weirton to Welch, Martinsburg to Matewan, and all points in between, this is the Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. Tonight's show is brought to you by Northside Automotive, Route 19 in Summersville. We'll beat the advertised price of any other dealer in the state, guaranteed. Now here's your host, Tony Caridi. Good evening, everybody, across the state of West Virginia. Welcome on in. It is time for the Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line on this Wednesday night, day two, 12th month. Coach Hunter in the studio with us. Thanks so much for being with us. We've got a busy show coming up uh, tonight. Let's see here. Football, football, and basketball. Why not, right? It's tis that time of the season. Coming up on our program tonight, we'll talk with Shepherds football coach Monty Cater. They're undefeated. They're 11-0, and and they're hosting Slippery Rock at Shepherd on Saturday for the right to advance to the semifinals of the Division II National Playoffs. And should be a good game. Slippery Rock's 12-1. and Shepherds 11-0, and as mentioned. And we look forward to it here on Metro News as well. We'll be televising that game on the Metro News Channel Uh, noon on Saturday, and the Metro News Channel, WVMetroNews.com. We'll talk with Monty Cater. Also, we continue to get ready for West Virginia and Kansas State, the regular season finale. We'll talk with Matt Walters. He has seen every snap of Kansas State football this season from the sideline. He'll give us a different perspective. Here's my question, because when you look at Kansas State's numbers, their scores – my question is going to be, are they a below-average team that can't get it done, or are they a good team that just falls short? Yeah, I mean, I, very good question. And I, I'd love, I guess maybe we'll find out a little bit Saturday really afternoon. Really interesting. Yeah. But- really interesting. You take a look at their numbers, and statistically, they're in these games, right? Sure. They're, like, really close to winning these games, and yet individual statistics – there's nothing that knocks you out. I mean, there's no 1,000-yard rusher. Sure. There's no guy that has 50 catches, 60 catches. So about the only guys that are the most productive guys, and a knock on wood, but they're two doggone fullbacks. Yeah. <laughs> they got a kid named um, Winston Dimmel, who's a freshman, Dana Dimmel's son, okay. who's the co-offensive coordinator. He averages about 99 yards a catch. And then Glenn Gronkowski, right? Brother of. Brother of Rob. Mm-hmm. He averages about 25 yards per catch. They, they just And they catch about one to two balls a yeah. game. That's it. it. They just kind of. Little kinda wheel put route, Put you right? to sleep, put you to sleep, put you to sleep, put you to sleep, pound you, pound you, mm-hmm. pound you, quarterback run, running back run, quarterback run, running back run. So you'd say, that's it. We're bringing everybody in there. Huh. Play Slip action. Slip by you. Flip it right over top. And then they just go, like Clydesdale. <laughs> Do those numbers, in, in the, you know, the fact that they've been close, typically haven't gotten over the hump, though they did a couple games, remind you of Iowa State? I mean, that sort of w- was the mantra we had with Iowa State go- last week at this point. Very close in a lot of games. Couldn't quite get there, but maybe better than their record indicated. In the end, it wasn't. My perception, at least, and I'm only through their offense right now, my perception is that these guys scare me more than Iowa State scares me. Special teams. Yeah, that's they've had, certainly true. They've had, a, they've, had a kid, they've had a kid return three kickoffs for touchdowns this year. Two for 100. Two for 100. Three kickoff returns. That's how they get you. They get you on that stuff. They block ponds. They block a field goal. They do those kinds of things, and in a low, in a small, low number possession game, that's what uh, that's concerned. You. Anyway, so Matt Walters, Kansas State sideline reporter, will join us. Also, ladies, attention, all ladies. We've got uh, WVU hosting a ladies-only basketball event at the WVU Coliseum. I think it's Friday. I think it's Friday. Josh Eilert will join us, WV basketball coordinator of operations. We'll join us a little bit later on in the program. All right, the coaching job vacancy list is shrinking at a pretty brisk pace. Latest news out, Mark Richt leaves Georgia, not under his own choosing, but says, okay, fine, don't want me? 
Miami will take me. Mark Richt reportedly ready to become the next head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. I think it's a win-win. If you do take a look at Rick's numbers at Georgia, they are incredibly impressive, but they did tail off over the last several seasons in comparison to what he did in his first run at Georgia. He was winning just like a stupid number of games, right? High, high percentage. And it did tail off. He became human. He was 6-2 and in his first eight bowl games, and then he was 3-3 and in his last six bowl games, that kind of stuff. So maybe new change of scenery for him. He gets re-energized. It is without question, right, when it comes to skill, still the best place in the world for players. Still the best place in the world for football players because it's warm all the time, (laughs) and they run all year long, and they can throw it all year long. And they can get better all year long. Oh, and by the way, the density of the population is really thick because the weather's good, so a lot of people live there. So you have more houses, more bodies, more people, more players. That's going to be an interesting hire. If he can keep away the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the riffraff that normally uh, takes down Miami's program on a somewhat regular basis, I think he will, they'll be fine. Uh, what's a little probation between friends? <laughs> See, he ain't going there. No, that's where the problem could. That's where the problem could arise because he's going to tell those guys, not doing it that way, and so you'll get that isolation. Be like, oh, he ain't doing it that way, so we're out. Meanwhile, my uh, Michigan defensive coordinator D.J. Durkin, ready to become the next head coach of the Maryland Terrapins. Guy's got a heck of a pedigree. Coached under Urban Meyer and Jim Harbaugh. Really good. Defensive coordinator at Michigan, and they're among the best defenses in the country. So he's got a great pedigree and guys that he's learned from, and now he gets his chance to be the guy. Played at Bowling Green, just like Don Nealon and Dwight Wallace. Played at Bowling Green, GA under Meyer at Bowling Green, and then hooked up with Urban Meyer Jim Harbaugh in their stints, and so now he's the guy. 37 years old. It's a great age to be a head coach. Not too young, not too old. But still, until you're the guy that is the head coach, nothing is a given. It's still, no matter, I don't care if you learn from Bear Bryant, right, and Fielding Yost. Doesn't matter. I don't care who you learn from. That doesn't necessarily going to mean that you're going to be a successful head coach. It just doesn't, right? If you nope. sleep in your garage every night, it doesn't make you a car. So you can stand next to you can stand next to Urban Meyer and you can stand next to Jim Harbaugh and you can stand next to Bear Bryant. It doesn't mean you're going to be a great head coach. Got a chance to, you know, got a better chance than guys that were learning from Snuffy Smith. Yeah, probably. Doesn't mean you're going to be the guy, because at the end of it all. To be a successful head coach, you just have to have the right internal stuff that makes it. And you're not that guy. You're not Urban Meyer, and you're not Jim Harbaugh. So you just have to wait and see. So every single hire, I don't care who it is, with the exception of maybe like three to five guys. I'm not sure it's five. Might not be five, but yeah. exception of about three guys. Yep. That, they're the only ones that are guaranteed to win. Yeah, everybody else, right situation, you know, all luck yep. involved. It's a crapshoot. Yep. Every it's, hire is a crapshoot, right? Absolutely. Every hire is a crap crapshoot. That's that's just the reality of it all. Um, so that's the deal. That's what's going on in the uh, in the coaching world. Uh, Kirby Smart's going to be the guy, as anticipated, at Georgia, but can't do it until after the SEC championship game this weekend. I mean, he's another one. Yeah, he played there. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, everyone has always thought he could be the guy at Georgia. But he's still never been the guy. Not yet. Not yet. Sometimes it doesn't go well when you got to be the guy. Sometimes you you have to do things in your new job that you don't like doing. And you go like, you know what? This isn't what I thought it was. No, head coach is all different than anything else on that staff, right? I want to... 
I want to work more with my kids. I want to be with my players. Well, guess what? You can't because you have to spend four hours on Tuesday talking with media and people you don't want to deal with. And then you got to go talk with the boosters to make sure that they give you enough money so that you can go build this or build that. I hate that part of it. I hate that part of it. Well, guess what? That's part of the deal. Absolutely. Some guys just like they, they bristle at that. Ugh. Don't want to do that crap, man. Well, guess what? High risk, high reward. That's why you're getting paid a heck of a lot more than you used to be paid. It's part of the deal, but it's not, right? Some guys like it. Some guys don't. When we come back, Monty Cater, Shepard, can they beat? Can they beat the wet pebble, the slippery rock? I mean, the, the slippery rocks on Saturday. Plus, Kansas State sideline reporter Matt Walters and Josh Eilert, WV Basketball, talking about women. That coming up here, Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. All Medicare eligible individuals. It's time for open enrollment. Take advantage of the health plans, Medicare plans, with benefits such as Silver Sneakers Gym membership an extensive list of doctors and hospitals. Contact us 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week at 1-877-847-7915 or visit healthplan.org slash Medicare. This information is not a complete description of benefits. Contact the plan for more information. Limitations, copayments, and restrictions may apply. Benefits and or copayments coinsurance may change on January 1 of each year. You know who taught me to use a hands-free device while driving? My mom. She scared me to death all through school with that phone up to her ear, driving us back and forth. Now that I'm on the road solo, I tell my mom, I'm worried about you. Go hands-free with the phone when you're driving. I do. It's important to set a good example for parents, so when she rides with me, I turn it off, put it down, and just drive. The West Virginia Department of Transportation, saving one life at a time. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes. Two minutes. On Metro News, for 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. When something is missing from the picture, it doesn't make sense. Without the right people, your work site is just a site. Your office is just a space. Let's Train West Virginia has grant funding for on-the-job training in today's in-demand careers. Workers learn while they earn, and companies can be reimbursed up to $10,000 per eligible new hire. So qualified employees and satisfied employers complete the picture. Learn more at letstrainwv.com. Blockbuster sales event. It's the must-see event of the year. Well-qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles get a low-mileage lease on the 2015 Grand Cherokee Laredo for $279 a month. Almost there. Just five more minutes. Almost home. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Could you survive in the woods? Seriously, could you survive in the woods? Uh, I can enhance your chances of doing that. How about this? Bush, bushcraft survival skills take place this weekend at Twin Falls Resort State Park. You'll learn how to establish shelter, create a fire, move fire, by the way. Not only create it, but then move the fire to where you need it. Foraging wild edibles, procuring and purifying water, land navigation, plant and tree ID, and more. It's a reality adventure by day, and it's a relaxation by night. Check it out. Twin Falls Resort State Park this weekend. Real adventure. You'll find it here. Wild, wonderful West Virginia. 
Coach Monty Cater, Shepard uh, Rams, joins us right now. That might be a good thing for your uh, players in the offseason to do some bushcraft survival skills. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how many would make it. <laughs> Wait a second. They get in there in the trenches and they block and they – they snort and they spit and they bleed and they sweat. I mean, I think they could make it probably. You'd be surprised. Uh, no snakes in there, though, Tony. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Probably guys were a little bit tougher 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would think. <laughs> probably so. They probably. might have been. Probably so. Hey, congratulations on the win last weekend. That was a good game, huh? Uh, yeah, I tell you, it really was. And uh, really proud of the kids being able to come back. I mean, we were down – a lot more than half of the game, and uh, we're able to get two touchdowns after a good stop by our defense, and uh, you know, really was a was exciting win for us. You have, uh, for the most part this season, you've been kind of rolling uh, people pretty well. Um, what did you learn from your team when obviously it was against them, and now all of a sudden now you got to make the play? So the whole different uh, mindset, obviously. Well, it is, and, uh, you know, like I said, I was proud of the kids, and, and I think the preparation by the staff was, was really good, but that's a good football team, and the same thing is going to be said this week with, with probably a better football team. You don't see very many 12-1 and one football teams that aren't good, so they, uh, they did a great job up front and made it tough to go ahead and run the football. We had to rely on the passing game just a little bit more, but we've had to a lot of this year because of a young offensive line. When you put tape on and you start watching uh, Slippery Rock, what hits you? Well, there's not a lot of weakness. They score a lot of points. They've got a lot of weapons on offense. Defense really attacks you. They really play downhill, probably play a little more man-to-man -man defense than we've seen teams play, but they feel like they can go ahead and put enough heat on you that you're not going to have a lot of time and you can play that man-to-man. -man. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us, but – you know, it's not going to be brand new. I think that, uh, again, Jeff Ziemba's done a great job directing our offense. He's well prepared. And, you know, again, that, that young offensive line's had a chance to play together for a year now. And while we still got some guys beat up a little bit, you know, they've learned an awful lot. And hopefully we can keep him standing up all day. I'm assuming uh, looking at their offensive numbers, Slippery Rock is running spread uh, last several games, 40, 52, 65, 61, 40, 41. Straight spread? Well, I mean, that's uh, – they've done a great job. And, I mean, well, we've been scoring off a lot of points yeah. this last weekend, too. So, that uh, – you know, I think the defense is – you know, it, they're going to have to stand up. This is going to be a great time to do that. But our defenses have, have, you know, for the most part, really limited teams getting in the end zone. We've given up a little bit more rushing yardage this year than we have in the past three or four. But – We've still made it tough for people to get in the end zone. And, you know, you look at it, the IEP didn't score an offensive touchdown against our defense at all. Yeah. Coach, you get to this time of year, defenses dominate more than offenses when you play teams that are of this caliber? I think they do. But, you know, special teams also come into play a little bit more. Sometimes the weather does. Uh, we've been fortunate that we really haven't played in really bad weather and even when we had had a little bit of rain, which we did, it was more lightning than rain when we played Charleston, but that was early in the season. So we've been fortunate enough that the weather hasn't had a big impact on what we've done, whether it's been home or away. So I think Saturday looks like it's going to be a decent day, but you never know. Those guys flip coins too. Talking with Monty Cater, the head coach of the Rams of Shepard. They're ranked, uh, depending on which poll, number five and number seven. Slippery Rock's number 10 and number eight. Um, do you sense now as the stakes get higher, you get a little bit more excitement there on campus? Well, we really do. And I, I was just really happy with the size crowd and following that we had, you know, even for a home game when it was, you know, a holiday weekend. And a lot of times you don't have all your students back or anything. But uh, I, I think there is a lot of excitement. Obviously, it's, you know, you like that. And we tell our kids there's nothing like December football because there's very few teams playing at this point. But, you also are going to have a big challenge each Saturday when you stay in it this long. What's the biggest thing you're selling to your team this week as to what it's going to take to win? Well, it's a lot of the cliches, and I've talked to a lot of media people this week and last week, is that obviously you can't turn the ball over. They're like leading eight nations, I guess, in turnovers that they've been able to get with fumbles and interceptions. They really make a lot of things happen, and we can't help them. They don't need help. 
but I think special teams are going to be a difference. You can't give up big plays. We've got to make them, you know, earn the things that they get. But we got to have a little bit better running game than we have uh, in, in this last one and because we've got to be able to find some balance. We don't want somebody to make us one-dimensional, which is always what our defense would like to do to the other team's offense. But we we got to have some balance this weekend. Monty, I know when we talked to you last week, you were battling through some injuries, and obviously you managed to battle through those. But how are you health-wise? Probably not much different. We're we're still not going to get our left tackle back, and uh, I know he has played very little, if at all, in these last three or four games. And that's Will Smith. But you know the other guys have had to play. Uh, our center's pretty beat up. Uh, I, I think we'll get a, a couple guys will be able to play, but. And you know, we lost a wide receiver in uh, Angelo Gene Lewis this last week, and uh, you know, still trying to get an idea if he's got a broken bone in his foot. But he's definitely out, and we don't have James Gupton back yet either. Which there's a guy that's first team All Conference and a first team All Regions missed the last four games. It's an attrition deal, isn't it, at this time of the year? It, it really is, and you know the teams that can stay healthy. I mean, we, we look at that with our running backs. We look at that with our defensive line. That it's it's not just going to be one group or one person. And, you know, that's really stood us in good stead in terms of being able to go ahead and be a little more healthy this time of year. But, you know, there are other areas where we haven't been so lucky. And, you know, nobody's got everybody back. First day of camp pretty much starts that attrition. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, once you get into 12 or 13 weeks, that's, that's the way it's going to be. High noon on Saturday, Rams Stadium. Again, if you can't make it there, you can watch the game on the Metro News channel at WVMetroNews.com. Shepard against Slippery Rock, and the winner advances on to the semifinals of the Division II playoffs. Coach Cater, thanks so much for being with us. We wish you the best. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. You bet. You take care. There he is, Monty Cater. Amazing job. 29th season at Shepard. And among the winningest active NCAA football coaches in all classifications, he's fourth all time in wins among active coaches. Think about that. We're talking about every class. He's got 249 wins. Ken Sparks at Carson Newman's got 334. Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, 278. Dennis Dowd's East Strasburg, 256. The number four, Monty Cater at 249 wins. Well, we know after... Another week or two, he'll at least move up to third. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Beamer retires, so yeah, it just—it's amazing the consistency that that program has had. I mean, you always talk about cycles; they don't have cycles. Fantastic job! All right, we'll take a break. We invite you to stay tuned. Coming up, we'll head out to Manhattan, Kansas. We'll talk with Matt Walters, the sideline reporter for the Wildcats of Kansas State. Try to get under the hood on these guys and see exactly, really, truly, honestly. What are you getting into here on Saturday if you're West Virginia? What are you getting into? I saw a uh, saw a story today uh, about how big this game is from one of the Kansas players. What's it going to mean for them to become bowl eligible? A lot of emotion. And so the question becomes, you know, can West Virginia offset that and beat a highly motivated team? Yeah, they might be five and six, but I think if you win this game this Saturday, if you're West Virginia, in my opinion, that's a good win. Now, nationally, that's not going to make people go up and down and jump and do somersaults, but based on the circumstances of a team trying to become bowl eligible, being at home, where they you know, are, are really good at home normally, I know this year they're not, they haven't been great at home, but that's a good win. That'll be a good win. So would this be the best win of the season oh! for West Virginia? I mean, the only road game, road victory they have, right, is is Kansas, which obviously is minimal in terms of difficulty yeah, level. Yeah, let's let's see here, Coach. Right, let's check the. Uh, I mean, check. Let's check the dossier. Uh, Texas Tech. Texas. That's a good question, Coach Hunter. Um, uh, Texas Tech is bowl eligible, mm -hmm. and you beat them, but you beat them on your home field. So would it become? Would it be the? Uh, yeah, probably, right. Be honest. Yeah, with you. probably would be. Yeah. Uh, answer yes. There we go. More about the Wildcats when we return. Do stay with us here on the Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. We'll be back. West Virginia has balanced its budget on the back of the coal industry ever since we became a state 150 years ago. 
Historically, the coal industry and coal-fired electric utilities have accounted for over 60% of all business taxes, while high-energy wages contribute a disproportionate share of income taxes, and coal severance dollars sustain important programs in all counties. All told, the industry infuses over $26 billion to our state's economy. Coal alone has paid down nearly a billion dollars of the state's workers' compensation debt. Consequently, all state businesses have experienced major reductions in workers' comp benefits. The coal industry has always supported our people and our economy, but it's under attack from the Obama administration and the EPA. It's fighting to survive. Coal taxes in West Virginia are higher than our surrounding states. We're losing coal markets to our neighbors. Let's get our mines and coal miners working again. Support a reduced tax rate for mining. Paid for by West Virginia Coal Association. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes minutes. on Metro News. For 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. Friday Blockbuster Sales Event. It's the must-see event of the year. While qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles get a low mileage lease on the 2015 Grand Cherokee Laredo for $279 a month. Almost there. Just five more minutes. Almost home. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program. When something is missing from the picture, it doesn't make sense. Without the right people, your work site is just a site. Your office is just a space. Let's Train West Virginia has grant funding for on-the-job training in today's in-demand careers. Workers learn while they earn, and companies can be reimbursed up to $10,000 per eligible new hire. So qualified employees and satisfied employers complete the picture. Learn more at letstrainwv.com. Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line, Wednesday night edition of the show. Tony Caridi along with Coach Hunter. A reminder that uh, this coming Christmas, over 100 children and their families are going to be spending Christmas at WVU's Children's Hospital. And through over the years, obviously, thousands of kids throughout the state have been uh, helped, lives saved at WVU's Children's Hospital. And so Northside Automotive is once again this year collecting toys that will be delivered to the Children's Hospital so that the kids will have those for Christmas. What they're doing is they're collecting from now until December the 12th, so 10 more days from now until December 12th, collecting new and unwrapped toys along with other needed items. Bring them to the dealership there, Route 19 in Summersville, and drop them by. And when you're there, enter to win a $500 cash prize. Also on December the 12th, which is Saturday the 12th, from 10 until noon, one and only guy by the name of Santa. Guy by the name of Santa. Nice guy. Wears a red suit, jelly belly, Red nose, he'll be there. Unknown at this point whether reindeer will be in attendance, but Santa will be there at uh, Northside 10 until noon, Saturday the 12th. Check it out, northsidewv.com. Delighted to be joined right now by the sideline reporter of the Kansas State Radio Network, Matt Walters. Good evening to you, Matt. Hey, guys. How you doing? We're doing well. How are you? Not too shabby. Ready for uh, Ready to see Santa and the reindeer, to be honest. That, that, will they be at the game on Saturday? You know inevitably that some kid in the student section is going to be wearing a Santa hat, maybe the whole costume. Yeah, no doubt. But 
It's not going to be quite as conducive as Santa would want because it's supposed to be sunny and in the mid-50s. I'm so loving it, not, man. Absol- may not be here. Absolutely. We'll take sunny and 50 anytime, yeah. right, this time of the year. Exactly. You've seen every snap from this football team all season long, right from field level. And you look at their scores, and they have been extremely close in some of these games. And right, The exception, obviously, being Oklahoma, where it just wasn't going to happen for them. But other than that, they're, they're answering shots. Is this a good team that's had bad breaks, or is this just a below-average team that just doesn't have it? Well, uh, that's an interesting way of uh, <clears throat> phrasing it, Tony. I would, uh, as weird as this may sound, I'm going to shoot right in the middle of that. <laughs> okay. and, and what I mean by that is, you know, K State's only been blown out once, and that was by Oklahoma. Um, K State's uh, win last week against Kansas was a blowout, and really, other than that, everything else has been nip and tuck this year. Um, K State was, you know, within an eyelash of, of beating TCU. Was you know right there with Baylor until until late after trailing by 21. Um, the one against Iowa State was, you know, kind of a miracle in some respects. Uh, Oklahoma State uh, in Stillwater was a game K-State could have won easily. But the other side of your question, I think, is fitting because K-State does not have a marquee name, so to speak. There's no Tyler Lockett anymore. And, and that was – for me, one of the concerns going into the year because Kansas State, I thought, maybe lacked a little bit of firepower. They didn't have a, you know, their returning running backs didn't produce big numbers last year. They lost not just Lockett, but Curry Sexton. They lost their number one tight end uh, from a year ago in Zach Trujillo. Uh, they had a quarterback who was the number one guy who had no Division One experience. He gets hurt on the first play of the first game of the year. And then you're bringing in a guy that had never, ever started a game at quarterback at any level in his life. You don't hear about that very much at Division I. So that compounding with all the injuries this year, the fact that K-State is a win away from being bowl eligible and being 6-6, and to me, is, is pretty stunning. Our guest is Matt Walters, sideline reporter for Kansas State. When you watch this team play, Matt, as the season winds down here to the end, is your perception that, hey, when I watch these guys week in and week out, they're getting better, or has it kind of stayed the same? Well, in some ways they've gotten better, but it's always, I mean, as the years marched along, it's been a case of, you know, next man up. I mean, it's just been a revolving door unlike any other college football season I know I've been around and, you know, I, I'm in my 12th year doing sidelines, but 20 plus and covering K-State and, and Bill Snyder's just never had a year like this. Hmm. Um, it, it's one of those where, you know, if, if you didn't have bad luck, you'd have no luck at all, but you know, nobody feels sorry for you and you got to do what you got to do. And, you know, K-State's taken some lumps. They've given up points, but, I, I don't know that I've seen a more resilient team in that they get down 14 or 21. Somehow, some way, they find a way to get back in it and make it interesting. And, you know, they've not won some games where they had an opportunity. Um, this is not a quick strike offense. The defense, again, is suspect in some areas. But the fact that they've made as many games close, and, and again, that, that they're 5 and 6 right now, to me, is, is staggering because. They very easily, a while back, could have checked it in. I mean, K-State went two months without a win. That They're not used to that here. Right. And Bill Snyder's not used to that. He hadn't lost six straight till, or since his first year in 89. And back then, he only had 45 guys on scholarship. Um, so, I mean, it's just remarkable. But they have gotten better. I mean, Joe Kubner has made some strides at quarterback. Um, the offensive line has been... Yeah, stable and, and one of the better areas on this football team. Um, and there are some guys on the defensive side. I'd say one of the uh, – it's hard to say most improved because he's a freshman, but he got thrown into the fire, and that's Duke Shelley who's a cornerback, and, and he's played pretty well. So there have been a few bright spots to go along with some of the 
you know, the, the doom and gloom surrounding all the injuries. Matt, statistically, def- the defense for K-State, it, it looks like they've given up yards through the air, but who doesn't in this league, but have been right. pretty good against the run. Is that fair? Because obviously West Virginia is a team that now runs the ball much better than it throws it. Yeah, I would agree with that. And that's, uh, I think that's on point because, you know, K-State, I don't want to say shut down, but they did a really good job against Chuck Linwood in the, in the Baylor ground game, which I, I don't think – you know, got enough credit over most of the season. Um, you know, they did a good job against TCU. They they eliminated KU's ground game. They, you know, took care of Oklahoma State. The one team that, uh, the two teams that really, um, you know, the, the jumps out, I mean, again, Oklahoma had a huge day. I kind of, I washed that one to the side. But <laughs> Texas in, the, in a rainstorm and Texas Tech had uncharacteristically good days running the ball against Kansas State. In the middle of the defensive front uh, with Travis Britz and Will Geary, those guys have been solid. The defensive ends haven't been too bad. But this is a this is a team, because of the talent level where it's at right now, is much more adept at shutting down, eliminating a ground game than it is somebody's passing attack. Matt Walter is our guest. He's the sideline reporter on the Kansas State Radio Network. So let's bust into this thing now. Let's talk about it. Let's walk it through. So West Virginia, yes, believe it or not, uh, with Dana Holgerson as the head coach, is going to come out there and we're going to run some power pistol. Or we're going we're to run some, uh, some tight ends, some wing stuff. Uh, we're going to have a quarterback that's going to run. Uh, we're going to just kind of buckle it back there. And when we do throw it, we're going to throw it really far and deep on go routes. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do some bubble. Well, not so much bubble, but receiver screen stuff. Maybe right. maybe occasional Both jail. Screen. Little hook screen, little jailbreak screen coming back at you. A little, little curl routes, little hook routes and underneath the coverage, things like that. Does that bode well for Kansas State's defense, or is that a concern for Kansas State's defense, in your opinion? I would say the deep balls and the tunnel-type screens uh, will be the ones that may potentially give K-State the biggest trouble. Okay. Okay. So Scott. Because I've, just because it's happened all year long. I mean, I I never played college football. I've only observed it um, for years. And, and this is me speaking. I'm not speaking for anybody else. But one thing that that bothers me about K State's defense is with guys in the secondary, they are not adept at finding the football. They are pretty good at. Uh, anticipating when the receiver is going to lift up his hands to catch the ball and then knocking it away. But I've seen too many home runs hit uh, by the opponents. And I'm a, I'm a guy that believes, you know, if you turn at the right time and find the football, you can get an interception. Um, and that's just not happened very much. So uh, I, I know what West Virginia has got, and there's some things they're going to score some points. I mean, if, Considering the elements are going to be nice, yeah. if if West Virginia scored, uh, I'll say less than less than thirty two, I would be surprised. Ooh, that's a big number here. That's a big. K State. I think K State will score, but I think this is going to be a game like Iowa State, where it's going to have to, you know, K State's going to have to score 35, 38 points. Uh, potentially to win the game. Okay, here's the deal. In the Holgerson area, era, West Virginia scored 30 points or more in 43 games. And right. When West Virginia scores 30 or more points, they do pretty well. Like the winning percentage is whacked out over 90%. Right, and I would think that's the case for a lot of teams. Um, you know, I'm sure K-State's going to try to eliminate the run game, you know, eliminate Smallwood, and for that matter, you know, Skyler did a great job last year up in Morgantown. Um, you know, when he came in after the the injury, uh, K State's going to do, I would think, everything they can to eliminate the ground attack and roll the dice uh, with West Virginia's passing game and, and see what they can accomplish. The the big thing, Tony, and it and it was a little different again at KU. Um, and no offense to KU, but they they're not a very good football team. K-State has had difficulty until 
the last two weeks against Iowa State and Kansas of forcing turnovers. Mm -hmm. And to the the front seven or front six, because case they will run a four two five much of the time, um, the defensive ends and the and the tackles in Brits and Gary who I referred to, those guys have been able to knock some balls free and force some turnovers. But up until that time two weeks ago, that hadn't happened at all. So uh, again, part of it depends on if K State's able to force a couple of turnovers, then do something with it, but. West Virginia is going to – they're going to move the ball. They're going to have, I would say, a pretty impressive uh, yardage total, and they're going to score some points. But a lot of it goes to what Kansas State does offensively and can they outscore West Virginia. If this is a if this is a 24-21 type game, again, considering the elements on Saturday, I'm going to be floored because I, I don't see either team you know scoring less than 28. Great insight. Matt, thanks so much for your time. We look forward to seeing you on Saturday. You bet. Safe travel, right. guys. Appreciate the invite. Thank you very much. You take care. There he is, Matt Walters, sideline reporter for Kansas State. That stat on WVU, since 2000, West Virginia is 113 when they score 30 or more points in a game, 51-4 and four when they score 40 or more points in a game. All right, Mountaineer basketball, that's on top. When we come back, stay with us, North South Automotive Statewide Sports Line. Getting to the top is always a challenge. Yet what so many people have learned is that when you drive the award-winning Jeep Grand Cherokee or the versatile Jeep Cherokee, the top is just the beginning. Because Grand Cherokee is not only the most luxurious SUV in its class, it's also quite adept at going further, thanks to a 730-mile highway driving range. Not to be outdone, the award-winning Cherokee strikes an equally perfect balance between capability and comfort with things like available premium leather seats and a choice of three available 4x4 systems. So when you're in a Grand Cherokee or Cherokee, think of a 10,000-foot peak as simply a vantage point to find your next 10,000-foot peak. One drive and you'll discover why Jeep brand continues to be the best-selling SUV brand. Award segmentation summit model based on total SUV sales over the past 12 months in the 2014 Awards Light Vehicle Segment Jeep is a registered trademark of FCA US LLC. As a cyclist, we make choices. We choose which motorcycle manufacturer to buy from. We choose what type of motorcycle we ride. We even choose where and when to ride. We also choose to ride straight, alcohol and drug free. Alcohol is involved in 50% of motorcycle fatalities in West Virginia. That's one in two drivers who die each year. Don't become a statistic. Ride straight, alcohol and drug free. Presented by the West Virginia Department of Transportation, Governor's Highway Safety and Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Program. The Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line returns in two minutes, two minutes on Metro News. For 30 years, the voice of West Virginia. When something is missing from the picture, it doesn't make sense. Without the right people, your work site is just a site. Your office is just a space. Let's Train West Virginia has grant funding for on-the-job training in today's in-demand careers. Workers learn while they earn and companies can be reimbursed up to $10,000 per eligible new hire. So qualified employees and satisfied employers complete the picture. Learn more at letstrainwv.com. Statistics show that 80% of auto fatalities occur close to home on rural roads. Cops. That's why law enforcement is stepping up rural patrols and cracking down on impaired driving. If you are over the limit, you are under arrest because drinking and driving don't mix. Remember, over the limit, under arrest. This message brought to you by the Governor's Highway Safety Program. This fall, 
Not all blockbusters are movies. The Jeep Black Friday Blockbuster Sales Event. It's the must-see event of the year. While qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles get a low mileage lease on the 2015 Grand Cherokee Laredo for $279 a month. Welcome back in, everybody. Northside Automotive Statewide Sports Line. Talked about this earlier. I'm going to give you another uh, reminder on this. Coming up this weekend, Crash Course, Bushcraft Survival Skills at Twin Falls Resort State Park. Learn how to establish a shelter, create a fire, forage for wild edibles, procuring and purifying water, land navigation, plant and tree identification, and more. It's a reality adventure during the day, and it's Beautiful relaxation in West Virginia at night. Twin Falls Resort State Park. Check it out. Wild, wonderful West Virginia. I know a guy that could do it. Who? I know a guy that could go in there and forage. He could live outside. He could be a, uh, he could be a uh, bushcraft guy. He's joining us right now. He's the coordinator of basketball operations for the Mountaineers, Josh Eilert. You could do that, couldn't you? I thought you were talking about Ronnie Everhart or <laughs> Jay Jacobs. <laughs> oh, wait, you and Ronnie could make it. <laughs> Jake, Jake, Jacobs couldn't make it. Jacobs couldn't make it out of the van into the forest. No, I don't think he had the chance. Poor, poor little buddy. Josh Eilert's coordinator of basketball ops for WVU. You guys have got basketball 101 ladies night uh, coming up again. It is this coming Friday. Friday. Give, it, give us the lay of the land. What do we got? What can ladies expect if they go? <clears throat> well, Tony, I, mean, I think our sixth year doing this, what we do is uh, we bring in – uh, as many ladies who want to come in, uh, usually they're Mountaineer fans, but uh, we we throw some hors d'oeuvres at them from all of areas and give them a wine glass and get them a couple glass of the wine and get them uh, get them loosened up for the evening. And then what we do is we put them through stations. Uh, each year we change it up because a lot of these ladies come back every year and uh, they, they they enjoy it so much. But uh, we'll have a station, for example, with uh, Coach Huggins where the ladies would just. Uh, sit in his office, and they can just grill him. Uh, Q&A station with Coach Huggins. There's a station um, we're going to do this year where in the film room with uh, Coach Everhart and Coach Martin where they're going to break down all of our press. So there's we have like four or five different presses. And just explain the, the simple things about a press to, so those ladies can go home and, and, and tell their husbands, you know, uh, and, and sound knowledgeable what, about what they're talking about when they're watching a the game. Absolutely. And uh, I know that the past history, the, the, this thing continues to grow, and ladies uh, absolutely love it because you do get uh, some good insight. Number one, you look at the, you have the opportunity to check out all of the facilities inside the practice facility, and then in addition, you know, learn some of the X's and the O's aspect of it. What do people need to do? What do ladies need to do to register for this year's event? Well, uh, I think there's one more day to register online. You can just go to wvsports.com, uh, click on men's basketball, and there's a little camps tab, and they can register right online. You can view the brochure right there. You can download the brochure, get a little more information about it. Um, that's probably the best way. If not, they can just call the office, 304-293-2195. That's my direct line, just you know, just to let me know a heads up uh, if you want to come and reserve your spot. Outstanding. Uh, I see pink on this thing. Is that just pink because it's ladies or any of this money go donation-wise? No, we we keep it in the program, but the, okay. the pink is uh, um, uh, we put the, like we do the West Virginia wine glass. It's got the pink WV, and we take good care of the ladies and, and uh, reward them for coming. Um, stylish, getting, stylish yet functional. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, after the, after the event last year, Hug said, well, why don't we do something on the floor? And a lot of these ladies, they're, they're – they're not sure what they're getting into. I had a lady call me today. He's like, do I need to be wearing my basketball shoes? I was like, no, ma'am, you don't. But uh, we are going to do something on the floor with Coach Harrison. He's going to walk through some of our, uh, you know, you've been around the program, Tony. We're going to put the X's out and kind of sure. show them the five-man motion and the spots that we fill. And just give them, you know, as long as they can pass and walk around, they can kind of understand the, how the spacing is in our offense. And so that's new to this year's program. Really good. Okay, so, uh, again, you can do it online right now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By going to WVUsports.com and the basketball tab and then go into camps, or you can call Josh's direct line, 293-2195. You got it. 
One other thing I need to bring up needs to be said. So you've been here nine years now. Is it nine? Yeah, nine years. You came here as a little kid. We're, we're starting nine. Yeah, you're starting nine. It's nine. Okay. Kids have been born here now, so the kids are here, and all right, doing well. But you are a Kansas State graduate. That is correct. You are a Kansas yeah. State graduate. You hooked up with Hugs when he was at Kansas State. So where's your heart on the gridiron on Saturday? Well, my heart's with the Mountaineers. And that's, that's what I like. Isn't that I nice? Mean, Isn't that yeah, nice? I love the wizard. Uh, he's a great, great man. And, um, and I, I hate to see him not go to a bowl game, but it looks like they might still go to a bowl game. If the Mountaineers beat him. Yeah, they could. I mean, conceivably, yeah, they very, could go. Very likely will. They could. They conceivably could get uh, get the thing done. Yeah, should be good. Um, uh, we look forward to it. And again, want to give a shout out to the ladies. If you're listening, if husbands are listening right now, I know we have a lot of ladies that do listen. I mean, it's great for the husbands too. I mean, if they can get the their wives involved, they won't catch so much heck. You know, if if they're sitting there watching basketball. Well, well the, all re- evening. the reality of it is, Josh. I think if they go to this, they can go back to the house. And when their husband starts barking at the TV for that they're doing this or that wrong, she goes, "No, you dummy! They're yeah. run. They're running motion. They're running exactly. motion. No, that's not his responsibility. His job is to get the trap in that corner. He should not be out at midcourt." Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the point of it. And I mean, they, they're going. I guarantee you, they're going to walk out there with more and walk out of there with more knowledge about the game, especially about Mountaineer basketball. I mean, there's a station to where we sit down. Oh, I'm going to do this new this year we're gonna sit down with all the newcomers in the locker room and they can get to know the newcomers uh, Tavon Myers, Issa and Maude, uh, Logan Rout, um, all those guys are all going to be in there and, and they can get to know those kids and and so they'll feel like they know those kids and they're you know watching them throughout the years. Yeah fantastic good deal buddy we appreciate it and uh, hope you guys have a good turnout there on Friday. I appreciate it thanks for having right. me on. Thanks. See you bud. All right take care there he is. Director of Basketball Operations for the Mountaineers, Josh Eilert. And again, that is Basketball 101 Ladies Night this Friday evening. And again, you can do it online at wvusports.com slash basketball. And then once you get to men's basketball, go to camps or give them a call at uh, 293-2195. 293-2195. That's it for us. We're out. Music's on. Special thank you. To Monty Cater, head football coach at Shepard. Again, our game with uh, Shepard and Slippery Rock is on the Metro News channel on Saturday at high noon. You can watch it. Watch it. Check it out at www.wvmetronews.com on the Metro News channel. Thanks to Matt Walters, Kansas State sideline reporter, and to Josh for joining us. We're out. Have a good night. See y'all.